P-A-S-C-A-L You are now rocking with that dude Pascal We be going wild Haitian in the building So, so, so original Got the haters Got your feelings Get your hands up to the ceiling And keep them held high Cause St. Louis is ready Forget about it Goodbye Hold up, we just saying hi Five somebody Rise up weekdays Catch us live Somebody let's go Good afternoon Good evening And good morning everybody and welcome to the Pascal Show. Hope you guys are all doing well out there, enjoying your day, making it positive, making it an amazing day, and also spreading awareness on things that are going on in the world because we got a lot of stuff to talk about, y'all. We have got a lot to talk about, okay, um, on this particular story. Um, and uh, it's weird. This is something that's just been developing over the past couple days, um, and it just kind of has now started to get some national attention and i felt like you know what i need to jump on here and chop it up with you guys so that you guys know what the heck is going on here on this particular story i mean this one is so this one has reached out and uh it has caused such a such an interest that even jean benet ramsey's brother himself has come out and said hey guys like get 5-0 get off your butts and do something because we got a young woman or a young girl missing right now we definitely do so we got to jump in here very very soon i want to spread the, the the word spread the awareness let people know what's going on with this one um yes i do have another one i have another story that i was going to talk about but then i saw this one really start to you know kind of this just caught my attention. I was like, you know what? Let me talk about this one real quick. I got another story that I will be doing another live on very, very soon. But I figured, you know, this one I wanted to talk about real quick so that people in the Colorado, Boulder, Colorado area can keep their heads up, keep their eyes peeled, keep their ears pricked up because uh, there's a 14 year old girl that's been missing. She may have been, and I have to use these code words, but she may have been rush houred. Okay? She may have been, if you get what I'm saying. So there's a lot of speculations going on going on here, flying all over the place right now, revolving around the this missing person's case. So I figured we should talk about this. And of course, I'm working on some other information with the uh Excelsior Springs story i know that other people are now starting to catch wind other other youtubers are starting to catch wind of that story uh and that's great news get people uh bring the awareness over that story as well um still we don't know everything as of yet but i'm i'm kind of sitting back and waiting to hear more information from the police on what they receive what they find in that house and they said they're, they're going to be there for a couple days or several days so you know for a fact i will be talking about it as soon as we get more information about that could this be a serial situation or no was this just one one set of takings if you will one time or does this does that man have that monster have a history a long history of doing said acts so we're going to find out more information about that very very soon so do me a favor we got to get into these stories we got to talk about this for real i'm in talks with some people around the excelsior springs area i'm in hopes to have a in-depth good conversation and some more information for you guys more exclusive content for you guys revolving around that particular case my mind is still blown over that situation but like I said, I'm keeping a close watch on that situation. And I'll let you know more when that when the, the time is right. OK, but anyway, guys, do me a favor. We got to get into the things we got to get into these stories. Do me a favor. Hit that like button down below. Send it past 200 likes as you guys start to file in. Good morning, good afternoon and good evening to every single last one of y'all. And if this is your first time checking out the show, please do me that solid. Hit that subscribe button down below. All right. That'd be great. Be greatly appreciated. And it'd be great to have you a part of the Pascal Show family. Anyway, let's get into this story, shall we? There's a young, young girl, 14 years old, by the name of Chloe Campbell, that is missing right now. 
she's been missing as of for the past 10 days now if i have the uh if i have the math correctly she went missing on september 30th and uh apparently she was last seen with two sketchy older men after a high school football game now we are going to get into some more of these things apparently uh apparently the parents received a dis uh, anonymously received a disturbing photo where she looked injured and unwell i have many questions about this anonymous photo right there's a lot of questions i have revolving around that like how did they anonymously receive a photo right and i'm not speculating I'm not throwing any shade towards the family i'm just wondering it's an honest question how can one receive an anonymous photo un unless they received it like not ding dong ditch here's a photo you see what i'm saying i'm wondering if they are if the family or 50 the law enforcement has done whatever they can to uh maybe trace back trace it back because it does seem a bit strange in my personal opinion it's just just a bit strange to receive anonymously i feel like anonymous doesn't exist anymore nowadays there's such a digital path now i i know rose with thomas just said or rose with thorns i'm sorry just said you can block your number that's true that's very 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 true but i wonder if there's a way to you see what i'm saying i'm wondering if there's a way to finesse that you know but then again i could be wrong it could be a burner phone too you're right rose with thorns but it does seem a bit strange right to me not saying anything I'm not I'm not saying anything bad about that. I'm just curious about anonymous. But then it, nonetheless, they received something that was not so great. OK, and yes, it could be a burner. It could be many, many different things. Sorry, my my uh, headphones are acting a fool right now. Acting a fool. OK, um, but that's what I think. Like if it's a burner, if it's if it's a or if it's a fake email or any of that stuff, I feel like FB, the FBI, just like Tisha just said, FBI can trace that ish. That's just what I think. But I'm getting ahead of myself, right? So we'll get into that here very, very soon. You know, uh, R Roberta, Roberta. No, I'm just kidding. Roberta on on Facebook just said, "Hey, could have dropped, could have been dropped off at home. That could be it too. But it is a little strange. Like I said, we're gonna look at it. Okay, we're gonna look at it. We're gonna be talking about that very, very shortly. But we got to get into this thing again. 14 year old Chloe." Campbell is missing right now. She was at a football game and I guess she went to like this little little hangout spot and then after that after being at that hangout spot she went missing. So obviously a lot of people are wondering a lot of different things according to the parents. There were two sketchy older men that she was last seen with allegedly. And now she is nowhere to be found. It has been 10 days. Let's look at this article really, really quick. Be sure to hit that like button down below. Send it past 200 likes really quick for me. Do not forget to hit that subscribe button as well. It'd be greatly appreciated. Let's get into this article. Okay. So parents of missing Colorado teen, 14 years old, Chloe, all right, uh, who vanished from school from a school football game, was apparently with two sketchy older men say the friends know more than they've shared amid fears she's been and i can't say that word but you see it loud and clear right there okay now so much people are feel like obviously understandably people are feeling some type of way about this so much that this has reached out to the ramsey family and it's it, it grabbed jean benet's jean benet ramsey's brother and it made him so moved for him to get up and basically say, hey, 5-0, get off your butts and do something about this. Solve this, solve this case. Solve what's this, what's going on. Save this, save this young woman as much as we can or as quickly as we can before it turns into something devastating, right? Sorry, guys. Headphones acting a fool today. Okay. So. Let us get into this article, shall we? All right. 
So the parents of the missing 14-year-old girl are begging for, uh, for her friends to come forward with more information after she vanished from a high school football game with two older sketchy men 10 days ago. Chloe Campbell disappeared on the 30th of September after being spotted at a Boulder's, Boulder High School football game in Colorado and was last seen looking, quote-unquote, intoxicated on Boulder Creek Trail. Her family are calling for her friends to speak to the police about the missing teen, saying they, quote-unquote, know more than they've shared. Now, this screams at me a bit of the Kylie situation, okay? And I'm going to explain this here in just a minute. The reason why I say this screams the Kylie vibes is because of, well, we're going to get into it. I'm getting ahead of myself. I tend to do that. I'm sorry, guys. But this is giving off a lot of vibes, a lot of Kylie Rodney vibes. They were out. She went to the football game. And, you know, uh, later on, we find out that she that they were at this spot uh, hanging out. She was with other friends. And then all of a sudden. She's gone. She's missing again thing is is that they said that she was last seen intoxicated kylie i'm just saying it gives me kylie vibes okay and also there's more to this which is why i feel that there's a little bit of kylie vibes and i think it's getting a little it's going off the rails again this is another situation where people go into speculation land go into their chat forums say a bunch of stuff that's not true apparently there's uh fabricated uh, uh obituaries that have been created about her saying that she's no longer on this planet, that she has passed, so on and so forth. On it, Just people are making up crazy stuff. Again, Kylie Rodney type of, type of vibe, okay? Um, Tisha, thank you so much for the $20 super sticker. I really do appreciate it. Thank you so, so very much, Tisha. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. It's just, it's just very strange, but let's get into this, okay? Kylie's parents, David Campbell and Dr. Jessica... Ro Nape Romo reported her missing last night, uh, that night, but it took the police until October 8th, ha, eight days later. Say what? Let me repeat that again because I did mess up that reading that sentence. Okay. They report the family, the parents reported her missing that night on the 30th, September 30th. Police did not do anything until October 8th. Somebody make that make sense. Eight days? Hua. Eight days later, to urge anyone with information about her whereabouts to come for why? Hold up, hold up. You know, because I, you know, I'm learning as I go too about this info. Please, somebody give me the real reason why the police dragged the aces for eight days. Was there another case going on that took more precedence? That took more focus? Eight days? You got a you got parents that are sitting there going, hey, our daughter's missing and we need help. 5-0. Help us. Help a brother and sister out. And then all of a sudden they say, Oh yeah, we'll get to it. We got to finish our coffees and donuts. Eight days later. Eight days later. They come through. Oh, come forward if you need any help. If, if come forward if you have any information because we need we need the information so we can find this this young girl. What? Somebody make this make sense. Eight damn days. Fourteen year old girl. Boulder, Colorado. That makes no sense to me. But okay, that's the information that we have. Moving on. Since her dis disappearance, so stupid. What? I'm sorry. I'm still re reacting to that. Eight days, y'all. Okay. Since her disappearance, Chloe's parents say they've received an uh, ominous photo from an anonymous Snapchat account. There it is. An anonymous Snapchat account claiming to be their daughter. Huh. The image proved that she is alive, which is good. But they say she looked, quote unquote, injured and unwell and believed it was sent by a third party. Now, we got to look at that piece here. 
that whole thing right here. Okay. This is something that that's uh, uh, fascinating as well. Uh, and definitely sparks up a few questions. Okay. A Snapchat is sent to the family by an anonymous Snapchat account. And they're saying that was claiming to be their daughter. The image proved that she was alive. So it was her face. They identified her saying that that was her face, but obviously she was not in, she was in dire straits. She was not in good shape. And they believe it was sent from a third party. Was, obviously it must've been sent by a third party because was what was the dialogue in that Snapchat? What was the conversation? What were the text messages, text messages like in this, in this Snapchat, right? What were the messages in the Snapchat? If she sent any, any other messages. But clearly they saw a photo of her and it definitely 110% was her. But the question still remains. Obviously, one, obviously it was a third party. But the sec the one question I have that still remains is who sent it? Why would they send it to the family? Was it for ransom? Were they trying to get some finance? Are they trying to get some financial gain by showing their daughter? Showing her that she's still alive? I don't get it. Then also, can't FBI or, you know, the, the tech, those tech savvy individuals clickety clack on their QWERTY keyboards and, 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 and maybe search and find where this Snapchat account was created from? Couldn't they do that? Possibly. Like I said, there's a lot of questions here that seem strange. These are, this is strange. From the 5-0, from police dragging their feet to this anonymous Snapchat message that they received. But the, again, I'm going, what else was at what 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 else was said in this Snapchat? Or was it just simply a photo? Strange. Again, strange. Boulder police have, crit have been criticized for branding the teenager as a runaway, despite there being no uh, indication that she has fled from her home in the past. See, and that's the thing. This is the thing that I, I, I will say about um, the situation in Excelsior Springs. There was a lot of that excuse with a, a, of these uh, these young women, uh, these young girls that were found, you know, that they're continuing, I'm assuming continuing to find their remains in the basement of that monster's home in Excelsior Springs. All of them were basically pinned or, or thought of as just straight up runaways. They just dragged their feet on trying to make an effort to try to find these runaway alleged runaway girls. When surprise, surprise, some of these people may not have just, disappeared on their own merit they actually disappeared by the hand of this monster then you look at this situation and you sit you say 5-0 was dragging their feet because they just assumed just assumption just on the assumption they said oh yeah we'll get to it she's probably just a runaway yet there is no indication that she has ever fled from her home in the past so why would you instantly think that like i said Somebody do the math for me because the math ain't math in here, y'all. What makes you all of, a, all of a sudden say, yeah, that's exactly what we're going to do here. We're just going to wait. You got parents who are wondering where they are. Doesn't matter if that kid is has run away. That kid is still considered a missing child, even if they ran away. They're still missing from their family. Why wait eight days? Doesn't make sense. All right. So they branded her as a runaway. Uh, they have now launched an appeal saying that she might be, quote unquote, in danger. Duh. But say that the case doesn't meet the criteria for the insuance of an Amber Alert. Okay. So on Monday morning, Chloe's parents said they are Relieve police are finally taking the case seriously. Among those criticizing the cops for their slow response is John, uh, John Ramsey, 
half brother of the unalived Jean Benet Ramsey, who tweeted BP, B, who tweeted BPD, telling them to get off their asses to find her. And of course, this is another photo of Chloe. Chloe Campbell, 14 years old, by the way, again. And we're going to look at some of these uh, clips as well here in a, in a little bit. But again, I want you guys to know, for those of y'all who are in the area or maybe in the surrounding areas that m keep your eyes eyes and keep your head up, keep your eyes peeled, keep your ears pricked. But this is Chloe Campbell. She's 14 years old. She has blue eyes. She weighs 120 pounds. She is five the, uh, at the height of five feet, six inches. She's been missing since uh, the uh, 30th of September. I guess she was last seen around 6 p.m. Uh, she was last seen near Boulder High School wearing a black hoodie, a purple top, and blue jeans. So if you have any information, please call or text 720-507-7379. Or you can call the Boulder Police Dispatch at 303-441-3333. And of course, if you just want to leave an anonymous tip, you can just call 1-800-THE-LOST. Okay? This is the photo of, their, of her parents, Jessica and David. Obviously, trying to find out what where their daughter is. Okay, Chloe's family fear that she may have been can't say that word, but rush hour. Got to use that code word, and is being held against her will, and have received multiple tips that her daughter is currently six hundred miles away in Arizona. Like, see, this is the problem here. This is why I say this gives off the Kylie Rodney vibes because there's. Everybody and their mama coming up with their own theories, saying all kinds of stuff, pointing this way and that way. They're, they're saying everything they, they can. Some people are saying things just to, to get clout, I guess. Some people are just trying to find ways to crack the case by fabricating and making things up. But the, there are people out here that are fabricating things, not only just saying that she's 600 miles away in Arizona, which makes no sense. They're saying other things like fabricating that she that she's already been she's already passed. She's she's already met her demise, that she's not really, um, you know, that she's no longer here. People are writing out fake obituaries and, and sharing those things. I mean, it just is insane to me what people are doing right now. For what reason? I do not know. Why people exist, why people are creating this type of stuff is still blind, like mind blowing to me as well. And for them to sit there and say that she's currently 600 miles away, like what? So her father said, uh, we want to make clear that we do not have any family in Arizona. So this is very suspicious to us. The anonymous Snapchat is the only communication the family has received from someone they believe is a third party pretending to be their daughter adding that the profile could be anybody her so they see a photo and it's her and she looks unwell and she looks injured but it's from a completely different account it's not from her snapchat somebody else made this up created it and then sent this photo of her okay so her family received a photo from the from a snapchat account claiming to be from chloe but the name is not one they were familiar with. So far, it is unclear when they received the message. Several fam uh, several friends have also apparently received message uh, messages from the missing girl with communications on Snapchat vanishing immediately after they are opened. Her friend or her parents, sorry, fear that her friends or other young teenagers are keeping information from the authorities out of fear of their own safety. Say I'm saying it again. Kylie Rodney type stuff. Kids are scared to step forward and speak up because maybe they because from what we from what we're going to hear in a little bit, they were apparently like hanging out, kicking it, doing whatever. And maybe they were, they're worried about speaking up because they don't want to get in trouble. Because they may have been with her partaking in alcohol, right? Binge drinking, been kicking it partaking in recreational 
party favors, if you get what I'm saying. But somebody may know something more. Some of the, one of these kids or some of these kids may know more than what they're leading, than what they're giving off. That could be possible. Jessica, her mother, and David have hired, a, have hired private investigators to look into the whereabouts of their daughter. They added that their uh, daughter has several underlying physical and mental health conditions, which she has not been able to take her medication for. That's very interesting because it may, it, there may be something more to this because of her mental health. Maybe. Just maybe. Possibilities are endless with that. In a statement, they said, after 10 days, our beloved 14-year-old daughter, Chloe Campbell, is still missing. While we're grateful that the Boulder Police Department and news sources are finally taking this seriously, broadening the call for help and legitimizing the situation, we remain gravely concerned that she may be she may be being rush houred, got to use the code word, and is not able to voluntarily come home. We have no credible commu communication from Chloe herself in in the full in fu uh, ten full days. We have we believe there are still friends who know more than they have shared with law enforcement. We are working closely with law enforcement agencies and the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children to bring Chloe home. Her mother also added that she may be with one or several people who are men or older boys who could be, quote unquote, involved with drug dealing or may have violent criminal records. Now, her uh, Jessica, the mother, said, uh, we believe that there, there may be other kids who know where she is or how to reach her. But they are, they are not sharing this information with the family or law enforcement. There is some evidence that they are uh, withholding information out of fear for their own safety because Chloe, because Chloe's case, it was initially designated as a runaway and not missing. Law enforcement and school authorities have downplayed this critical nature of this case, which has caused much angst. We're working collaboratively. We're working. Uh, collaboratively, gosh, I can't say that word, with the authorities to get the case to proper to the proper designation, and we have uh, retained a private investigator in the interim to continue investigating leads. Again, another photo of Chloe. Speaking to Fox News, her father added, Chloe never came home, and we became very concerned after uh, started investigating and found that she was last seen with two older men. She was described by eyewitnesses being with two men, older men, too old to be in high school. That's, that's something. Uh, one of whom was Asian, and the other one had a beard. Uh, this was around lunchtime at Boulder High. And also a football game. This was around lunchtime at Boulder High and also a football game. These two men are described as being sketchy. We have had multiple tips from various parties claiming that they have uh, knowledge that Chloe is in Arizona, that she is safe and has money and is with a family in Arizona. See, that, that's the part that doesn't make sense to me. Like I said, it doesn't make this part is still going like I, the math is not mathing for me. Now, now let, let's let's just say this really quick. Let's just say this. Because they did also say that she has some physical and some uh, mental mental health issues that she takes medication for. And maybe she hasn't taken in the last 10 days. Right. The medication obviously starts to wear off. Now, what if this happens to do deal? What if this is something that has to do with a that she's have she's having a, a bad mental break, and she became friends with these two men, and now she's in Arizona. Um, 
it is just a little strange. It is a little strange for her to just suddenly pick up and just get up and just and and just take off. That's the part that doesn't make any sense to me. What would make her go and just take off? If there was no early signs of her or other incidents before with her parents, issues with her parents or anything like that, was there any pushback? Was there any Cuz I get it, kids want to have there's teenage angst. I get the the want the need to be free, right? I get that. I get the the need for independence and whatnot. Fully get that. 110%. But something about this doesn't tell me that she just picked up and went to Arizona with some with some guys, with some older men. To me that doesn't it's not speaking to me like that. To me it's speaking like she was taken against her will. But it is strange that there are people out here saying that she just picked up and left and now she's in Arizona and that she has money. She's safe and she has money. Yet you got family members that are saying her parents saying that they received Snapchats showing otherwise, showing that she was unsafe. That she was not safe, that she was hurt, injured and unwell. That doesn't make sense to me. Okay, and they said we have multiple tips from various parties claiming that she that they have knowledge that Chloe's in Arizona, that she's safe and she has money and she's with a family in Arizona. What family is this? Where in Arizona? You're you're literally going to sit here and tell the parents, oh, she's fine over there, but you're not going to give that information out so that they can at least investigate that and find out what was actually going on. Yeah, and then the other thing, yeah, Jamie, who's saying this? Who are these multiple these multiple tips from various family from various pa- parties saying that she's okay, safe, got money, and she's with family in in Arizona? Who the family be? Who are these people? And this is coming from the family's mouth. This coming. This is this stuff is coming from the parents' mouth. This is not just coming from. Other people throwing out this BS. The family is reporting this out here for everyone to hear. So why is the family like, what's up? That doesn't make sense to me. None. Who are these people and why are they bringing them in? And asking who are these people? Like, who is the family that she's with? How does she have money if she, I don't know what, how maybe she babysits on the side. I don't know what it is, but you know what I'm saying. How does she have money? What money does she have? And how do you know that she's safe if the family just received a Snapchat showing otherwise? Unfit, unwell, injured, whatever. Just It just doesn't make sense. It just doesn't make sense. Again, I'm still trying to get the math to math. And then also on top of that, you have other people that in what we read earlier saying that family, uh, other friends have actually received Snapchats from Chloe. I'm trying to find where that was. Several friends. Here it is. Let me just show it to you guys. Let me blow that up. It says here, several friends have also apparently received messages from this missing girl with communications on Snapchat vanishing immediately after they are open. Now, the, the question is, if if there is something going on, if the parents, like if the kids know something, like and if they know that she's missing, why aren't they doing a quick screenshot? You know, it just takes two seconds, two seconds to take your phone and and do a quick screenshot. You don't have to screen record, but you can at least because sometimes those Snapchats, as soon as you see them, they're gone. But if you know you're receiving a message from a friend that people are looking for, maybe screenshot that ish, y'all. Why is this? This is sketchy as hell to me. Again, all of this is sketchy as hell.
Now, the other thing I will say as well, the other thing I will say this is this. And I, I'm going to say speculation warning because I have to. Okay? Because we, we got to play every single angle of this thing. What if, what if she's not happy at home? I mean, we got to play that part. What if she actually ran away? What if she is a runaway? Still, no matter what, I, I don't understand why police dragged their feet for eight days. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight days before they actually got active. Okay? But what if, just what if, she's not happy at home because of whatever, teenage angst, et cetera, right? So she tries to find freedom, independence somewhere else. Why would anyone, if any of these kids know this information, why would any of the kids out here hold that information from her parents? Why? I mean, honestly, I really, like, it doesn't make sense to me if if a whole, fa like, whole group of kids are holding tight to this secret that she's actually in Arizona with a whole other family living a life like it's golden with and, and it's o o okay and fine over there but we're going to hold to these to these secrets because we don't want the, her parents to know that doesn't make any sense to me unless the she's trying to run away from something that's toxic but i doubt that so why would the fam why would her friends that clearly know more than they're, they're letting off. Why would they hold this information, important information from the family and the police? That, that makes no sense if she was to just kick rocks on her own accord. Now, it could be because of just while we're in this world of wild speculation, if she was, if she did, disappear like this, like this. It could very well be because of teenage angst in this speculation world, or it could very well be maybe she's having a mental break. That could very well be it too, or it may not. To me, sounds like this young girl has been taken against her will in my personal, personal opinion. Because the this the, the math is just not mathing to me, it's it's just not. But before we uh oh, I do want to show you guys this. This is this is uh John Andrew Ramsey, you know John Benet Ramsey, um brother, half brother, coming out and saying, "Damn it, Boulder Police, get off your ass and find this child." Uh, have you ever met a fourteen year old kid? not usually trusted to make uh, sound, rational decisions. Boom. Now, and it could, I mean, like I said, this could very well be, I, I'm just saying, okay, Marion, thank you. I appreciate the, 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 the love. I appreciate it. Okay, you're asking the right questions. Keep up the great work, Pascal. Thank you so much for the comment. I really do appreciate it. But like I said, if she is out here on her own accord, it's still a 14-year-old girl. Period, point blank. Parents are out here desperately looking for their child. Doesn't matter if that child gone running away or if they were taken against their will. They It's still under the category of a missing person and should be approached with the same amount of energy, at, uh, with the same amount of energy, period, point blank. That's what I think when it comes to all this. It doesn't just because they go, oh, she'll eventually turn up. No, that's not how you do it. It's not. And I do think that if the fam, if her friends, sorry, I keep saying family, if the friends actually know what's going on here, 5 -0 should be interrogating the hell out of her, her group, her circle of friends. 
That's literally what they should be doing. This is just insane to me. Just absolutely insane. It says better. And it says here, uh, you know, uh, um, John Ramsey put up better. So because of uh, they tweeted saying, OK, we're, you know, uh, they're seeking Boulder police are seeking pub the public's assistant assistance in locating missing teen because they finally got off their ass and said, OK, we should find this girl now. OK, guys, you ready to get to work? Whip, whip, time to do some work. Finally got off their asses to do some work to find this young girl. So the pushback we got from both Boulder High and Boulder Police saying, hey, it's no big deal. She's just a runaway was frustrating. But we never stopped investigating. Her mother described uh, her as a as vivacious and funny. Adding. That they would use every resource in this planet to bring her home safe and sound. So, the, of course, we already know about um, John Ramsey. He stepped up and was like, yo, get off your butts and do something here, y'all. The pageant queen, oh, we already know about all this. And, of course, they finally said, in a statement, Boulder uh, police confirmed no one has spoken to Chloe since September 30th, that which was 10 days ago. They added investigators have received some information from friends who appear to have been in contact with Chloe. And there have been a few reported sightings of her in and around the Boulder area. Now, I will say this. I will say this. This is a thin. Five, six blonde girl. There's a possibility of many people seeing somebody that may resemble this girl. It's not like she has blue hair. It's not like she has any big noticeable tattoos because clearly she's 14. So why would she even have any tattoos? But you see what I'm saying. So out here, they're going to look at this. And of course, there's going to be many people going, oh, I think I saw her on the corner of such and such. Clearly. Friends have received messages that they believe could be from Chloe saying she is safe with a family in Arizona and does not want to return home. But family and police have been unable to confirm these messages that the, if these messages are, in fact, from Chloe or true. That's the thing. Another one like this is this is the problem. You got friends that are saying all types of stuff, which could be. This could be a cup this could be no Cupid shuffle. This could be a Kansas City shuffle where you point left and everybody goes right. Where every like her friends are going, oh yeah, she's in Arizona. So then they all start focusing on Arizona and she keeps running, you know, if she's running away. Then she keeps running east as everyone's going west, type thing. Or something else worse happened to her. And whoever these friends are know exactly what happened to her. Something very bad must have happened. And they don't want them to, they want to get them off their trail. Right? They want to divert, divert their scent and throw them in a different direction. To buy them a little bit more time. I mean, obviously, th th this is still speculation land. That's all speculation here. But why would these friends say all this stuff? And they have no idea. The, the 5 and parents have not been able to literally say if this is true or not. They have not been able to confirm truth or fiction. That's strange. That's very, very strange. So they're saying that the uh, you know the investigators are growing increasingly concerned about the the teen safety as it is believed that she has no access to money or her medication, which is obviously which is most likely what the case is here, you know. 
probably has no, none of her medication and God knows what's going on. And, and then the other question I have in my mind is what kind of medication was she on? Right. They say that she has physical and medical and, and uh, mental um, health issues. So what are those mental health issues that she needs this specific type of medication for that she ran that she may not have anymore? The questions are just brewing. And then I'm in my mind, I'm going, could this have been a reaction to or this this her her being gone right now? Could it be from her? having a not using the medication or having a mental break that could be it too there's also the idea of what if she made a a bad decision because of having a mental break or they say that she was intoxicated she was last seen intoxicated which i'm going to pull that up again here real quick But they say that she was last seen looking intoxicated. Okay. Says it right here. She was last seen looking intoxicated on Boulder Creek Trail. Could it be she took, she was drinking and maybe the, the alcohol did not mix well with her medication. So then she had a bad reaction. She got a little, she got drunk. She's 14 years old. Remember, this is a 14 year old girl. And if she did consume any type of adult beverages, could it have had a bad reaction to her medication? Many questions I have as well. Okay. Many, many questions. Hold on one second, guys. All right, I'm back. Sorry about that, guys. My dogs are tripping, so they'll be fine in a little bit. So just just deal with it, guys. I'm sorry. But um, so so that's a little bit strange, too. It makes me wonder, was there some sort of reaction? Right. Was there was there maybe a reaction to the to the medication with the mixing with the alcohol? If she had some sort of bad reaction. Right. Because, you know, some medications will say do not mix with alcohol. But again, we don't know what kind of mental health, you know, what kind of issues she she has that she's, you know, that she's taking medication for. But I did want to play a little bit of this news clip kind of gives us a little bit more information, which is why I say this gives me off near the end. You're going to hear in this video. This gives me off. Uh, this give me, gives me gives off um, Kylie Rodney vibes. OK, this gives me. Kylie Rodney vibes a little bit near the end, and you, you'll hear it in just a minute. Take a listen. Pleading for answers. Their daughter, 14-year-old Chloe Campbell, has not been seen in more than a week. She disappeared after a high school football game in Boulder. Michael Abeda is joining us live tonight from Boulder. And Michael, you spoke to her parents, who are understandably very worried. Very worried, Kelly. You know, Chloe was last seen eight days ago on the Boulder Creek path behind Boulder Creek High School after that football game in a place that her parents say students call the smoke spot. They also say that they are worried that she may have been taken against her will. Okay, so first off, 14 years old, base, uh, football game, etc. She goes off to uh, this place called the smoke spot. What do you think they smoking? What you think they smoking, though? OK, so they go to the smoke spot. All right. To do God knows what. And this is where she is last seen. I'm just saying, where do you think she be like, what do you think she's doing over there? Again, <laughs> a man, I'm weak. No, and that's true. It could it could very well be cigarettes, too. But I, I'm thinking it's a little bit more than just tobacco. OK, I'm thinking it's that wacky tobacco. OK, it's that devil's lettuce. OK, period. OK, but and Shay just said, you know, potheads are peaceful. I'm not saying that the, the I'm not saying that. 
okay? Um, but I do know that there's a lot of people out here. No, I'm not talking about the, I ain't talking about the rock. Okay. And I'm not talking about Dwayne. Um, and I'm not talking, I'm not, I'm not alluding to that at all. What I'm trying to allude to is clearly she was with a bunch of people kicking it, having a grand old time. Okay. Uh, maybe she was just with a group of friends in this smoke spot known to do some things there. Okay. Uh, and maybe she, you know, took a, a, a few too many swigs of this particular liquor. And there were some other guys there that were of other ages that were there. Like what they said is the last people that she was seen with were two adult males. Clearly, probably looking like this guy. As old as this dude here. Okay? As old as this reporter. That were clearly not high schoolers. And they say one of them was Asian and another one had a beard. And they clearly looked like they did not belong in high school, that they were grown ass men. OK, so in other words, guys that probably looked a little bit like this reporter. OK, in age, I'm saying. OK, so it is very strange that she would be out here hanging out. And of course, I, this is just me putting speculating, but maybe she met some guys there. After, you know, taking a few swigs and taking a, uh, taking a few puffs, that could be it, too, because they said that she was last seen in seeming to be intoxicated. And then uh, all of a sudden now she's not here anymore. But now she's in Arizona, like like I said, it with family, what family? It's just strange. Again, doesn't make sense. Math ain't mathing. She's got a really good sense of humor, um, and she's full of life. Jessica Canopy and David Campbell say their daughter, Chloe Campbell, is the light of their world, a light that's been missing for more than a week. They say on September 30th, she went to the Boulder High School football game at the school. They then say she was seen on the Boulder Creek soon after, walking, possibly intoxicated. But that's not all. She was described by eyewitnesses to be with two men, uh, older men, too old to be in high school, one of whom was Asian and the other who had a beard. The parents started their search as soon as she didn't return home, hanging flyers around town. Eight days later, Boulder police joined the effort asking the community to help them find her. David says neither he, Jessica, or Chloe's friends have had any confirmed contact with her this whole time. The communications that we've received through third parties that purport to be from Chloe uh, originate in a Snapchat handle that we're not familiar with. It could be anybody. The only proof that she's still alive that they've gotten is an ominous picture from an anonymous source that doesn't exactly put their minds at ease. She looked injured and unwell. They fear that she may be being held against her will or even trafficked to another state. But no matter where she is, they say they will do everything they can to bring her back. Chloe, honey, we love you so much. You are, you're not in trouble. If you can come home, um, boy, just please do. And if you can't, we will not stop until we find you. Okay. Interesting. Um, I'm going to roll that back just a little bit because I think that information is important to hear. But again, Snapchats, all that, Snapchats, et cetera. But they don't have all the info. It's just weird. Um, it's just very weird. It's very weird. I, I'm sorry. It, it's just it's it's all like not coming together. And then there's a this last part that he says here is very very important and very interesting as well. Like I said, it's just it gives Kylie Rodney vibes. I'm not saying that she drove a car or anything like that. It's not like there's some big search in, around a ravine or anything like or around a, a reservoir or anything like that. All I'm saying is that there's just a vibe here that screams like kids know something. They know more than what they're le letting off. And then there's so much inf misinformation that's getting thrown out that is uh, very disturbing. But I, I want you guys to hear the the family repeat their information because that's just important stuff this is to be with two men uh older men too old to be in high school one of whom was asian and the other who had a beard 
The parents started their search as soon as she didn't return home, hanging flyers around town. Eight days later, Boulder police joined the effort, asking the community to help them find her. Eight days. David says neither he, Jessica, or Chloe's friends have had any confirmed contact with her this whole time. The communications that we've received through third parties that purport to be from Chloe uh, originate in a Snapchat handle that we're not familiar with. It could be anybody. The only proof that she's still alive that they've gotten is an ominous picture from an anonymous source that doesn't exactly put their minds at ease. She looked injured and unwell. This injured and unwell says something to me as well, okay? This injured and unwell piece does say something to me. It does give off the vibe when he says she looked injured and unwell. That could very well be like she's have maybe she's having some sort of uh, mental break. That maybe her, like I said, the medication situation, all that. If she really is. If she really ran away on her own accord, if she ran away on her own on her own merit, this would be a, this is a completely different conversation, right? Still, it's a missing person case in my personal opinion, but that's still somebody running away. Now, this could very well be an issue of something where a young girl is having some issues, right? It just it seems very strange. Then I I am very I am very um cautious and I'm very hesitant about what I want to say next. But then again, P, everybody reacts to certain situations a little strange, a little differently. The family does, the parents do seem a, a bit calm. Maybe that's not the right word. But then again, everybody deals with grief. Everybody deals with um, nerves and, and concerns or a missing person that they love um, differently. So I, I look at this and I see a family, of course, they're coming forward because they're trying to find their daughter. But that doesn't, and, and maybe they seem, like I, I saw somebody say something about she's they're, that they're very laid back. Um, and that's something I saw as well, especially when you hear how the mother speaks. But then again, I'm going, okay, not everybody is used to being on camera talking, especially when it's one of the worst days of their lives. So not everybody acts the exact same way, and we shouldn't expect everybody the, uh, uh, to act as such. But it does seem a bit strange. And you'll see. It does seem a, just a tiny bit off. But I don't know. But then on top of this, from what they're hearing from other friends and, and, and stuff, that's these, these stories that are th flying all over the place, does not make th that does not mean that they're suspect number one. You see what I'm saying? It doesn't. You know. So anyway, it's it's just interesting how they're reacting. But I I, I have to give them the benefit of the, of the doubt because not everybody reacts the same way, and we don't know anything yet. All we know about is Snapchats. There's other friends that re have received these Snapchats ex as well. There's many questions I have here. Many, many questions I have here, indeed. But uh, take a listen. Take a watch. You guys be the judge. They fear that she may be being held against her will or even trafficked to another state. But no matter where she is, they say they will do everything they can to bring her back. Chloe, honey, we love you so much. You are, you're not in trouble. If you can come home, um, boy, just please do. And if you can't, we will not stop until we find you. So before we continue on that, I know some people go, oh, that's sus, right? Uh, I... I really do think that they're they're a family trying to find out what happened to their child. Given the, the facts and the information that has come out so far, it does seem a, a bit strange. Not on the family. It's strange to me that they reported her missing 
10 days ago. And cops did not do anything about this. They were very quick to they were quick on the up and up to report her missing. If there was any type of vibe that they were doing any that there was any mm, wrongdoing or that would make them look sus- uh, suspicious, I feel like them reporting, them getting it on the cam- on camera talking about these things would not exist. It just wouldn't. Just, just saying. It just seems a bit awkward, but they could just be awkward in general and not used to speaking out. There's plenty of people who uh, don't know how to talk on camera uh, or don't like to be out there in front of people. And then when they go, hey, can you just speak a little bit on your on your daughter? You know, what do you feel? What are you feeling right now? They're just kind of like, uh, camera's face, uh, daughter's missing. I don't know what to say right now. Oh, boy, I just want you to come home. Uh, just come home. You know what I mean? So I don't know. Um, but I'm not going to go down that route. I don't think any of that is going on here. I just think that it's a very crappy and very unique situation because it's not every day that you have people uh, uh, losing their, it's not people losing their, their loved ones, you know, have their, not every, not every day do you have somebody missing every single day. You know, this is a very weird and strange and mind blowing situation that I feel any family uh, uh, is, will go through uh, if they go through it. It's, it's just an awkward an awkward situation for sure. Um, you know, I'm praying for that family because this is this is terrible. In addition, oh, but this part, sorry, this part is very important to hear. This is why I say this is weird, and I said it earlier, but I say it again. This is very weird. Why would people go out of their way to write stuff? You'll hear. In addition to missing their daughter, Chloe's parents say they have been dealing with misinformation and rumors being spread in real life and online things like that she was found or that she's living in arizona with family which they say they have no family in arizona or even that she's dead complete with fake obituaries now they say- fake obituaries who does that who goes out of their way to write fake obituaries on somebody who's missing for the past 10 days I, I don't, don't worry I'll, just, I'll wait i'm just asking for a friend who goes out of their way to write write an obituary that's fake about somebody that's missing. That's what I mean by this, like this, this Kylie Rodney vibe. These fake things that are coming out. Who's got time on their hands to write that kind of BS? Real bloody talk. Who's got time on their hands, y'all? We talk about a 14-year-old girl that's been missing for 10 days, and somebody actually have people. He's saying people have done this. So people have the audacity to go out here and write this BS about a girl who's missing and say that she's she gone. Here's her obituary. What? It to me, I'm sorry. It's just so s- hail to the no. That's I'm going to repeat that one more again. So you guys hear this is why I say Kylie Rodney vibes because people are out here saying just creating so much BS and drama around this instead of just finding this young girl, using their energy to find the truth to getting us closer to finding this girl. They're making up BS like this. I'm going to let you guys listen to, you know, for those y'all in the nosebleed seats, one more again. In addition to missing their daughter, Chloe's parents say they have been dealing with misinformation and rumors being spread in real life and online things like that she was found or that she's living in arizona with family which they say they have no family in arizona or even that she's dead complete with fake obituaries now they say none of those things are true to get real information from their parents you can head to find ctb.org and if you have any information about what happened to chloe or her whereabouts you're asked to call boulder police that's right contact boulder police Quit wasting your time with BS and creating drama for the sake of creating drama. Again, makes no bloody sense to me. 
Why would somebody go out, out their way to do this kind of BS? There are plenty of missing people out here that need the right kind of energy and focus. Not this, oh, she's already gone. That doesn't, that's not helping finding this young girl. That's not. Like all the BS and drama that was going on online with the Kylie Rodney situation. All that BS. All of that. Where I'm sitting there going, hey, I'm my name's Bennett and I ain't in and I'm stepping far away from that BS. Because it's not getting us closer to finding the girl. It's not getting us closer to solving the, the case and figuring out what's going on. And now they're doing the same thing. Basically, in these forums, creating more lies, creating more misinformation, rather than using their energy and time and focus on trying to find this young girl. It's very disturbing. It's very, very disturbing. Now, again, these are just the, the the little bits of information that we have so far that we know of so far. We don't know anything else right now except for they've been anonymous, anonymously receiving photos from like Snapchat. Some other friends, whoever these friends are, have received Snapchat messages and all that from her so much that they're hearing this this new information saying that she's okay and that she's in Arizona and all this stuff with a family in Arizona. But again, the, the question still remains, where is she? What happened to her? And why is she in Arizona right now? Now, I will say this, though, too. I will say this, though, too. Because I think this is very important, too. I think this is very important as well. Family. Family is amazing, right? Family over everything, right? But sometimes families get fights, get into fights. Sometimes there's misunderstandings. Sometimes there's a bad few months, right, of miscommunication, trying to understand each other. This could very well be a situation of a girl who was very upset, very angry, wanted to want want some a little bit few a few more liberties to be herself. She's growing into her own self. She's growing into a young woman. Maybe she is sitting there going, "I just want to be me. I don't need my parents telling me what I can and cannot do." You know, like I've said a million times before. This could very well be a moment of teenage angst. But the one thing that's still driving me absolutely crazy is her her family receiving Snapchats saying that she is showing that she's in bad shape, injured, and unwell. If she ran on her own accord, if she ran on her own, her own merit, then why wouldn't any of her friends step forward and speak the truth? Trust me, if she just ran away and friends knew about this, they those friends would have spoken up so quickly. The friends that did not speak up and say anything, that says a lot to me. That's a huge red flag. To me, it says that something else happened. Something sinister happened to this girl more than just her telling her friends that she's going to run away. Why would her friends hold that information from her parents? Unless, and this is only just for this, this, this conversation here, unless those parents are very bad parents and they, and they're trying to keep her safe from violent, volatile parents. But I highly, highly doubt that. Again, think about it. If she ran away and you have friends that know that she ran away, why would they not give that information out freely saying, yeah, she ran away, so on and so forth? 
unless, unless something is going on at home in which she does not want to go back to that home. And those friends are literally sitting there saying, we need to protect her at all costs because we, how dare, God forbid, she ever goes back into that house of hell. But I doubt that. Clearly something else is, something more sinister and more disturbing happened at that smoke spot after that, that football game where she was hanging out with allegedly two grown men. These kids know something and then not and have not spoken up. But they're not speaking up because they're trying to protect her. No, they're not speaking up because they're trying to protect themselves. Because something bad happened. I will say that. And they're worried about saying something that could get them either arrested, thrown in ju juvie, or something. But there ain't no way that a girl like this goes running, runs away, without the kids actually saying, yeah, she left. She ran. She's definitely over here. I just talked to said su such and such person with this, that, and the third. She's in Arizona with this family, so on and so forth. Yeah, I'm talking to her through Snapchat. This is where she is. If she just ran away, they would have spoken up like this quick, like that. Why have fears of having that information? Why have fears of giving that information? You're not going to go to be thrown in juvie as, a, as an accomplice. Clearly, something else has gone on here. And these Snapchats, who's to say? Again, these Snapchats that the family has received and allegedly her friends have received. How do we know that those photos are, are up to date? How do we know that those photos are current day? You can easily upload a photo on Snapchat that you took a day before, days before, years ago. You could do any of that. So who's to say that that wasn't something that was taken right when she was taken? Again. Again, that's what I leave up to you guys as questions. Now, I see that uh, Cha H just said, uh, I think she ran away, or I think she 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 ran away. Uh, too many strange things and people who want to talk. Now, if there are strange things and people who want to talk, then why aren't they giving those people who actually allegedly do want to talk, if they do want to talk, why aren't they giving them a platform or an opportunity to have an audience with the police so that they can actually say those things so that they can nip this thing in the bud, get her back home as quickly as possible so that she's safe and sound instead of everyone out here scratching their heads, wondering what the F happened to Chloe and where the F is Chloe. That's the only that's the only argument I say. Why would they hold? Why would they why would any of those kids withhold any type of information like that? Just saying. And if they do know more information, okay? If they do know more information, these kids, they should be running to the to the to, to the police. Cuz they're not doing anything wrong. They're not breaking any laws. So why haven't they stepped up and said something? This It's been 10 days. Unless, like I said just a second ago, unless something else is going on at home that she doesn't want to be a part of anymore. But to me, that just seems... To me, that's still suspect. And that still remains to be seen. Because no one stepped up and said anything about, oh, you know, she's in a terrible home and she's this, that, and the third. Nope. no, Nothing that I've seen so far. People are just saying that she's no longer on this planet. They're, they're, they're writing obituaries, fake-ass obituaries, and saying a bunch of BS. Why are they doing that? Why? Again, I ask those questions because 
this whole thing is not making a whole lot of sense for me. And I'm trying. I think just like everybody else, I am trying my darndest to uh, to understand what the heck is going on here. But it looks like this is a family that just wants to get their daughter home as soon as possible. And it's so strange. It's very, very strange. You know, it's very, very strange. But real quick, um, you know, got to got to do a little show, a little love for the show and all that. So please, guys, do me a favor. OK, hit that like button down below. Send it past 300 likes. A like doesn't cost a thing. All right. Hit that like button down below. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button. OK, that would also really mean the world to me. And of course, please go check out my merch store pascalmerch.com or beautifulbeef.com. You can go there, check out all these wonderful hoodies and t-shirts that I have. We're still pushing the uh, suicide awareness t-shirts and hoodies, custom tie-dyed hoodies and t-shirts. We, of course, have the Break the Silence collab collab um, merch as well. Uh, the, the, uh, since this month is uh, Domestic Violence Awareness Month, uh, we have collaborated with the Gabby Petito family and Gabby Petito Foundation, creating these T-shirt and hoodies. So please go and check those out. We, of course, have some Halloween themed uh, T-shirts as well. We got a bunch of stuff here, um, like the my our CMOS uh, whole jogger set tops and bottoms hoodies, more tie dyes, the vibrant blacks uh, with the uh, hoodies and T-shirts here as well please go check those things out we got the brownstone of course at the top all at pascalmerch.com all custom made stuff like this hoodie right here this hoodie right here is made from or you know made by me beautiful beef collections or pascalmerch.com you can get it right there real talk bang and be uh and be looking good okay so uh please go and check those things out uh we do have that at pascalmerch.com i'd really appreciate it if you go guys go and just check it out for a hot minute you know what i mean uh but like i said every single last one of y'all if you guys buy a a hoodie that is um you know the tie dyes and all that they're all different no one gets the same pattern no one gets the same look they're all authentically different. You get a one of a kind hoodie or T-shirt all wrapped around your body. OK, so please go and check those things out. Um, you know, I put a lot of time and effort into these things. And uh, and uh, yeah, it's I, I have a lot of fun creating them and uh, giving them out to you guys. So please go and check them out. OK, um, and uh, let's see. Uh, I am right now. We are now getting ahead. We're, we're now catching up with some of the orders. Um, there was a shipment that we were waiting on uh, because we, we got a huge order of uh, T-shirts and hoodies. But uh, it took a little bit of time to get that uh, to get that material, the, the inventory in. So now we are literally in the middle of this week expediting a bunch of stuff. So we had to wait for material to come to us. Now we are now we are literally this week uh pumping out a lot of these orders that are a little bit um a little bit uh behind, but we are catching up like crazy. So uh be on the lookout for your stuff and all that, okay? And hiding 007. Yes. Um so also that is important to let you guys know that these uh t-shirt and hoodies like this one right here, uh the break the silence that is uh, like this one too, the front and back of it, of course. Um, these uh, portion of the proceeds is going over to the uh, Gabby Petito Foundation. So uh, Gabby Petito's mom, Nicole, created these hoodies, uh, or sorry, created this design. We we collaborated and we created this design together. And uh, now those are available right now. And of course, those 
the proceeds or a portion of the proceeds is going to the Gabby Petito Foundation. Same thing with the suicide awareness hoodies as well. We're still doing the suicide awareness hoodies because, uh, you know, we might we might push it a little bit longer or I might just keep it up there for for good because uh, suicide awareness should be something that we are aware of 24 seven rather than just one month a year. So, yes, please go and check it out. Obviously, uh, these are things for a really, really great cause. And uh, that collaboration is really exciting and uh, really dope. So, um, so yes. So please go and check those things out. That would really, really, really mean a lot. And of course, yes, when it comes to this story, I'm still trying to figure out what the hell is going on. Um, this is a very strange one as well. Um, um, it's a very strange one as well. Um, and that's the thing. I don't know what's going on with this Chloe Campbell situation. Too many questions are being brought up. And again, I keep asking why would the family or why would her friends hold back information on where the family can go and get their daughter if she has run away? And if there's any of the friends that do know information that they need to get in front of this and tell the truth. So that if she did run away, she can get back home in one piece because they're saying allegedly she's run out of medication or she may have run out of medication. And that's not good. If she is a runaway. And she ran out of medication that could, depending on what she is, has that medication for, that could be a very, very bad recipe for disaster. Um, so I'm hoping that they find a way to uh, get her get her home and get her in one piece. But of course, if we find, when we find out more information, we will be talking about it without a shadow of a doubt. And of course, also with the uh, story in Excelsior Springs, Missouri, uh, the potential serial situation, we will be talking about it as well. Uh, once we find out more information, I guarantee you, we're going to find out more information about that. Okay. Um, but anyway, guys, it is the show. I appreciate all y'all for being on and chopping it up with me. It's been a blessing as always. Please do me a favor. Hit that like button down below before you get going, before you head out. Be sure to check out PascalMerch.com. That would really mean a lot to me as well. Oh, and also, please go follow me on TikTok. The Pascal Show, one word. Go follow me over there. I've been covering a lot of other stories as well in short, shorter format over there as well. So please go and do that for me. That would really mean the world to me. Anyway, guys, it is time to get going. I appreciate all y'all. Have a blessed, wonderful rest of your day. I might be on a little bit later on tonight, but I don't know yet. I'll let you guys know very, very soon, okay? But it's time to get going. Be good to yourselves. Be good to one another. And I'll see you guys very, very soon. This is the Pascal Show. Bye.